Memphis, Shamam Williams coming to you on the field of 68 after North Carolina's 75 to 63 win over Kentucky. We're going to get right into it in just a moment, give you a chance to come on in. Great to have you with us here on the field of 68. North Carolina 75, Kentucky 63. Wildcats are now 1-5 for the first time since the 1926-27 season. I'm John Fanta. He is Shaman Williams, the former Tar Heel, ACC Tournament MVP in the late 90s. And Shaman, a 12-point win for the Tar Heels. Yes. What's your reaction to this one? Well, it was a great game uh, to see how they were able to use uh, their – strengths uh to put themselves in a position to win the game in the end uh you know back it was a back and forth game for a long time uh kentucky did a great job of of taking advantage of what they had at the at the beginning of the game and and north carolina i thought did a awesome job of being able to use their interior players to eventually wear down kentucky's uh interior which which played which paid big dividends at the end of the game uh, with last three minutes to go, I think the majority of Kentucky bigs were fouled out of the game, and uh, we were able to offensively rebound bas basketball, uh, the basketball where, uh, you know, there were issues for us in the first half. But, uh, you know, Coach Coach Williams did an awesome job. Uh, the interior, like I said before, really, really were magnificent in this win for us this evening. I'll tell you what, down the stretch in this game, you just said it, Carolina wore Kentucky down. They cashed in on the foul trouble, but you yeah. got to be able to create that. And Dayron Sharp comes to mind in this one, Shaman, because he had 11 rebounds. He has seven points. His presence was unleashed, particularly in the in the closing minutes of this game. I just thought he really put the icing on the cake. He did. Uh, he actually made a play that most people would, would probably think that Biggs – aren't able to make at the University of North Carolina. Uh, while Kentucky was trapping, uh, he actually got the basketball around half court and uh, put the basketball down, two dribbles, pushing the basketball, uh, drew the defense, made a, pa a pass baseline to Amando Baycott, if I'm not mistaken, where he dunked the basketball with two hands. Uh, he really did a great job of, of being the interior presence uh, that got made himself available after the first trap uh, turned, um, you know, pushed the basketball against the defense. And not only did he make a great pass, but he made a great pass without charging, uh, which most guys uh, have issues doing, uh, especially as freshmen and being a 6'11 freshman at that. When you need plays to be made, Caleb Love makes them. He has six assists in this game. The alley-oop to Garrison Brooks, that that was a type of dunk that I'm watching the game and I'm saying dagger on because it just was such a momentum boost in a time where they need the high percentage shot. Yeah, um, I felt like Caleb played better for me today um, because he didn't try to do too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he kept it consistent. Uh, he drove the basketball to the basket uh, a few times in transition where he was able to capitalize, um, but he made the game simple and uh, I know these guys have a lot of talent, but understanding who you are as a basketball team, I think it's going to be where our guard play has to go. Uh, it, it is my opinion. I would just put three the three guards on the perimeter and let the big stay <laughs> in the interior and just make sure that they get the basketball. And once they get the basketball, you put the onus on the bigs to make the decisions uh, for the guards uh, to create shots for them. But, uh, yeah, Caleb did a great job today of just being solid uh, for us and, and being timely with his opportunities uh, where he drove the basketball and was able to finish. Uh, but uh, the kid from Minnesota really, really paid big dividends today. Um, um, Walden, he, he, he paid big dividends for the Tar Heels today uh, with his shooting off of the bench. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was three for four uh, from three. Uh, three for three. He was three for three. 
Yeah, and, and, and a lot of those shots, um, you know, he had people running at him. He pumped fake one dribble to the side, took a step back three. Uh, I think he's, I think his ability to shoot the basketball is going to be uh, very instrumental in the growth of the Tar Heels this year. Well, well. And, and to your point, players not named Kerr and Walden go a combined three for 17 from beyond the arc. So as a team, you go five for 20. You, you know where this team is rooted in. It's rooted in size and yeah. the ability to wear teams down in defense. If you add Walden's perimeter shooting and you find somebody else in the course of the game who can hit that perimeter shot, that's how you get to that next level. Yes, yes. Well, you know, it's just being able to understand where your bread and butter is and, um, and, and understanding that the ball has to touch those guys in the interior. And then, like I said before, you know, those guys have to make the decisions uh, on where the basketball needs to go uh, after they've had an opportunity to probe the defense, uh, be it uh, scored interiorly or if there's a double team, uh, then pass the basketball uh, back, or even if you know they was able to play big to big, then you try to do that as well. Um, but uh, Carolina played uh, great basketball. Once that ball, you know, got to the inside into the hands of the interior guys, and they were able to uh, score the basketball as well as create other shots for for their teammates on the weak side. Interesting game on Tuesday night when they will head to NC State for their. ACC opener through seven games. Who do you think this North Carolina team is? <laughs> well, I think that they begin to show that their their identity is is the interior. I, I think that uh, people, I think the team is beginning to grasp that, and I think the guards are beginning to understand. Hey, you know what? Even though this is an interior uh, uh, team, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get my opportunity to score the basketball in timely uh, possessions and uh, throughout the game. And so, um, you know, I think the guys, uh, the, you know, the young guys are doing a great job with the minutes that they're getting. Uh, I think that they're doing a great job of being able to understand, you know, what's going to be needed to play, uh, you know, against the competition that they're going to continue to play against here in the ACC. Um, but uh, I thought they did a great job of showing some resilience in being able to come back in today's game against, you know, a, a talented team, a talented team. And, um, you know, I, I think this win helps them, under, you know, helps get a great win under their belt, um, but also get an understanding of how to move forward and, and, and how to do those things successfully day in and day out. Jamon, watching this game, this is a Kentucky team that is now one and five on the season. Just watching them play, what's wrong with Kentucky? <laughs> I don't want to say that there's something wrong with them. Um, uh, a lot of times, having you know great talent, uh, that takes time being able to to get those guys to understand how to play together. First and foremost, uh, second, you have to get those guys to learn how to play in a, an environment where, you know, they may have, you know, they may be talented individually, but, you know, when it comes to a team, you may not be as talented uh, as a team, not because you don't have the individual pieces, but you're not using the pieces the correct way uh, within themselves. And so um, I, I think that they, you know, they're learning how to take their bumps and bruises um, uh, as as a team, uh, I think that they're beginning to see uh, that people don't care that you are projected to be top five picks. Uh, I think that they're beginning to see that you're going to take everybody's best shot because you are, um, you know, you are the University of Kentucky, and uh, you know everybody wants to make their name off of you. And so, uh, you know, these kids are are, are learning that um, on the. It's a little difficult for them. Yeah, and, and some of the little things happening in the course of these games, I mean, Davion Mintz, he was the star for Kentucky. It's a bit, a bit unexpected. He goes three of six from three, but everybody else, nobody else hit a three. This Kentucky team still doesn't have a perimeter threat. Uh, it looks like we might have lost Shaman, but this Kentucky team is still 
you know, kind of lacking that perimeter threat. And it showed here again in, in this game and, and a team that really, really struggled um, from the perimeter again. And, and then additionally, 18 for 30 from the free throw line. Now, Roy Williams can't be happy with his Tar Heels team. They went 18 for 29 uh, from the free throw line. So this wasn't necessarily a well-played game, but I thought North Carolina showed their physicality. They showed they can defend at a high level, and they did do that. It, that those are the differences in games that might not be as pretty. There were a ton of whistles. I thought the officiating was a little bit – it was just too much. Too many whistles in this game. Too many fouls called in this game. But Carolina showed resilience. They showed a sense of toughness. You're trailing early on 19-8 to eight in this game. Things are not looking good, and they didn't seem to get thrown off or phased out. No. Uh, you know, Carolina's going to be Carolina. I mean, Coach William does a good job of just making sure that the, you know, Carolina basketball is going to be uh, Carolina basketball. They're going to push the basketball at the scores. Uh, they're going to try to get the basketball. They're going to run the Carolina secondary. They're going to make sure the ball gets to the right people at certain times. And so, you know, they're not going to be phased at some of the things that they're going to encounter just because of the way that Coach William coaches. And so, with that being said, uh, regardless of what's what they're facing at those times, uh, they're going to be they're focused on just playing Carolina basketball, and so that's a benefit of of having a system uh, that Coach William has uh, because it doesn't give you time to focus on the things that may be taking place at a certain time that that may mentally get you down within the game. Uh, so. Uh, you know, coach does a great job in that in that retrospect. Um, but the kids, I think, began to get a feel for things themselves. Uh, I think, you know, as I watched the game, they began to, you know, see things. They began to have a feel for what they felt like was successful for them and successful for the team. And they began to execute those things and uh, it benefited them. Um, in the second half. And when it got to the last championship minutes, uh, the things that they uh, began to take advantage of and, and do uh, throughout the game uh, put them in a position that they were able to get a great win this afternoon. First thing that pops in your head when you think about Armando Baycott. Uh, I, I like Armando. Um, I like for him to be more consistent in his effort each and every possession that he plays. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, um, because, you know, he played more minutes <laughs> probably as a freshman as he, than, than what he's getting this year because of the influx of our talented bigs. But um, when he plays at a high level and, uh, you know, gives that effort, uh, it really helps the team uh, with their interior presence um, because, uh, most teams don't have uh, two outstanding bigs, yeah. yet less four. And so with his effort, if he's capable of, of playing at a high level and, um, and exerting himself uh, defensively as well as offensively, it really helps Carolina in, in a great, in a great uh, way. You know, here's the thing. You have a 12-point win on a day where R.J. Davis and Leaky Black shoot a combined two for 13. It was not their day. Right. Uh, but I think it says that much more about what you have inside that you're able to win by a dozen. And, and the fact that Kentucky was in the amount of foul trouble they were in, and, and that's not normal for Davis and Black to be that poor from the field, but you want to adapt as a group. You want to be able to win in different ways. I feel like Carolina learned something about a way that they can win. Yes. Um, well, I, I felt like this was a great team effort. Um, I, I, I like to say um, the guys that came off of the, the bench today really, really impacted the game in, 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 in their own ways. I mean, Playtech uh, impacted the game uh, today. Um, you know, Dayron impacted the game. Uh, uh, Kessler uh, impacted the game uh, when he had his opportunity. Um, you know, Walton, he impacted the game when he had his opportunity. Yes, he did. And the brief minutes that uh, Johnson played, I mean, he impacted the game. And so 
what it said to me was, hey, you know what? There's, there's a lot of guys that are capable of helping this team win basketball games. And uh, when, you can, when you can look down the line and you're talking about <laughs> seven guys that can come off the bench and, and have an impact in the game, uh, it, 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 it says something about your team. Now, it makes it a little bit difficult as the coach as well <laughs> to find minutes for all those guys. Yep. But, um, but those guys really, really did a great job of, of putting themselves in a the position, focused throughout the game. And when their number, was, number were called, uh, they actually did a great job of, of, you know, doing their part for the time uh, being uh, to help Carolina get a good win today. Is there ever a bad time for a Tar Heel win over Kentucky? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you know, you're talking about two great programs, uh, two of the story programs in college basketball. Um, you know, I think today's game was good for basketball. Um, uh, great for the Tar Heels today. Um, but it's always great to, to, to play against competition. And, you know, sometimes – Sometimes you, you don't win, but you're able to gain something out of it. And today for us, uh, we were able to win. But more importantly, I think that the team was able to gain uh, a lot of, you know, about themselves from uh, today's uh, competition as well as the win. What do you think they learn about themselves? If, if there's something, as you're watching the game where you're saying, oh, they're not all the way there yet in that area, it's only December, a team – gets better and better. That's the goal, at least throughout a season. If there's something that you're saying, okay, that's a learning moment or that's a moment they could take from that you've got to be better at the next time you go out against NC State, ACC opener, what is it? Well, like you said before, you know, there's not many times where you're going to have R.J. Davis and Leaky Black go two for 13. And so when you have, you have those guys go two for 13, a lot of times because Carolina it known – uh, to have the, the outside consistency needed uh, that most people think, you know, that could benefit you uh, to be, you know, top 15 team in the country. So. Uh, Looks like we might have lost, lost Shaman. Here, we'll see if we get him back. Yep, you're back, you Shaman. Continue. Go ahead. All you. You were saying? Hello. Shimon, you hear me? You got me, man? Looks like we might have lost him. Uh, we'll see if we can get him back here. After North Carolina beats Kentucky 75 to 63. Shimon, you got me? All right. Yeah. Can you, 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 you were saying about, about learning moments. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you get, you know, you have an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? You know, there's always guys that's prepared to take up the slack to help our team uh, be successful. You know, tonight may not be my night, but it may be someone else's night that they can come in and help this team, uh, you know, win. And so that that's important. That's important because that makes everybody throughout the game. A lot of times uh, you, you're not playing. Um, you know, you're not playing and sometimes you can get, you know, lackadaisical, not focused on the game. And so now when you have guys that have had the opportunity to come in and play those significant minutes, that makes sure everybody's focused in each and every game because you never know when your time is going to come or the opportunity is going to present itself. And so uh, that's the benefit in, in today's win. You know, nobody's going home feeling like they didn't have a, a part in this win today and so you know like i said now that puts a lot of pressure on guys each and every day to make sure that they're listening they're focusing they're doing what's asked of them but also uh when those games begin to play they you know they're in the game and they're watching what's going on so when coach william calls them to go into the game they can pick up where you know the person that they're substituting uh for uh, has left off. And now a word on Kentucky from my end here after this 12-point loss. So the Wildcats get off to a good start. And you could say that that's 
good Kentucky or, or Kentucky showed up today. Davion Mintz hit three threes. It happens in the course of a basketball game. You have a shooter get hot, hits a couple in a row. Wasn't sustainable, and here's why. Eight assists. Eight assists out of 21 field goals and 16 turnovers by the Wildcats. They are a disjointed team right now. Offensively, no rhythm. Olivier Saar has not lived up to expectations. They have to find a way to get him engaged, involved, get him the basketball. He went without a field goal in this game, and he fouled out. Terrence Clark, 3 for 11 from the field. Kentucky comes off disjointed. Does it kill you when you don't have a perimeter threat that's consistent? It hurts. It hurts very much. But by the same token, you could find that threat with unselfishness, with connectivity. This team does not come off connected. Even though North Carolina had a bad shooting day from the field, that team came off connected. They did not get phased when they were down early on. They stayed together in this game, and eventually their sides, Baycott being the main guy, um, Sharp down the stretch in this game, and then you're able to find that perimeter shooting courtesy of Kerwin Walton, North Carolina's connectedness, their size inside, which Kentucky has size, but it got overwhelmed. It got overwhelmed because North Carolina, they can beat you on the glass. It, it's how they're going to win a lot of games this season. Yes. Kentucky is a disjointed team right now. You've got a bunch of five-star recruits. It doesn't matter. And it's why there's that dynamic in this sport of college basketball of experienced teams winning national championships and – if you're a blue blood, you're able to get that five-star kid, but you've got to be able to mix in some experience, whether it's the transfer uh, market, whether it is a player that, that sticks around. Kentucky got a player in Olivier Saar who is a veteran, and he is not doing enough for them. And that's a combination of lack of involvement, but also he's got to be better than that. They expected him to do so. Kentucky's a team with talented players. They are not connected in what they are doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can see that you can see that. And it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's an issue for them as a basketball team. Uh, now, uh, I thought Davion Miss was going to play well today, especially being from North Carolina. Um, you know, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a talented player and, um, having an opportunity to play against North Carolina, I, I felt like he was going to most definitely, you know, play a good you know, play a good game for them. Um, uh, a lot of times, you know, I, I say this uh, for myself um, when I'm working with, you know, talented kids, um, you know, it's it's always great when everything is predicated uh, about you. But what happens when you're in an environment that's not predicated about you? You know, the offense is yeah. on you. You know, how, how good are you when you have to be uh, the third guy? Uh, that doesn't take away from your talent, but the basketball is not going to be in your hand. And so, you know, are you still able to be the individual that most people think that you are? Um, you know, are you able to translate? Uh, you know, a lot of players, because they're so talented, they're so used to having the basketball in their hand. Um, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm an individual that when I train kids, I, I you know, I don't, there's, there, there is, an opportunity to teach them how to handle the basketball, but I'm not so much a one-on-one -on -one individual because they learn on their own when they play in, in an environment. The, the toughest thing for those individuals to learn is how to play without the basketball and still be effective. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I, I use an example of Pat Williams. He was a kid that I, I worked with, you know, you look at Pat Williams and you watch when he played, you know, a lot of people were, you know, a shock, like, why was he the fourth pick in the draft? Well, when you watch him play, you say, okay, everything that he does, it looks like he's, he knows what he's doing. Uh, every shot that he takes, it's a shot that you would want for your basketball team. Um, you know, it's a catch and shoot three or it's a pump fake, two dribbles, pull up. You know, he's not taking contested shots. So a lot of times these people think that you're talented because you can take a fade away off of one leg. Well, you know, most professionals when we're watching that is like you have to you're supposed to be the best and you have to take that shot. That's not impressive. Now, that's impressive to your friends and, 
the fans that celebrate you and those types of things, but it it it, it doesn't for me personally. It doesn't breed that you know you're not showing me why you are the best because the best players make it look easy. They make it look easy, and 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 me having to take a fadeaway on a high school kid or me taking a fadeaway in a college game, you know, it's not like you're playing against the pros at that point in time. Right. So uh, I think I think basketball has to reevaluate re-eval- itself and understand what's really important when you begin to talk about, you know, talent, uh, because kids are talented. But my thing is, how talented are you if your talent does not impact winning? Mm. And that's the thing. Patrick Williams impacted winning at Florida State. Impact winning. And when he gets drafted on draft night, everybody says, look at his averages. There's nothing to write home about there. It's not about averages. Not about you know what it's about? Take a look at the record. <laughs> and then take a look at his frame and his physique and what he does and what he brings to the table. Leonard yeah. Hamilton, by virtue of the way Florida State plays, it's a balanced out buffet of talent connected. It's yeah. like a meal, the way Florida State plays. It's like a five-course meal. And Patrick Williams showed last year he doesn't have to have 20 points to no. impact winning. No. And, and guess what else it says? I don't have to worry about having the basketball in his hand. So now yes. I have somebody that knows how to play the game and I don't have to make sure that he has the basketball in his hand or call plays for him uh, to, to, you know, to, you know, to help his ego. And so when you began talking about, you know, like you were talking, we were talking about Kentucky, you know, a lot of these guys are talented, but they're talented with the ball in their hand. And so when everybody has to have the ball in their hand, then what do you expect? You know, what do you expect to happen? And so, um, you know, I I think that, uh, like I said before, uh, a lot of these kids need to start evaluating, um, you know, what they're working on and and what they're trying to accomplish. And, you know, and for me, it's a travesty because if if kids are so determined that they have to have the basketball in their hand, you know, what's going to happen if one of these talented kids have an opportunity to be drafted, uh, let's say uh, Portland has the first pick in the draft. And they're going to say, well, we can't pick this person because this person needs the ball in their hand. And we know that Damon Lillard is going to have the ball in his hand. So we're going to pass on this talented kid because – everything that he does is predicated on the ball being in his hand. And so, um, you know, like I said before, um, you know, um, understanding what's important, understanding what you're working toward and making sure that your talent, your talent has an effect on winning is, is what needs to probably be spoken about more than just kids athleticism and ability to shoot a fadeaway three. Time for a final thought from Devon <laughs> Williams, North Carolina 75, Kentucky 63. What did you learn about the Tar Heels today? I learned, I, I saw some resilience in the Tar Heels today. Uh, if I, if that would be my word today, uh, resilience of, of being able to, to do it as a basketball team. Uh, and, and it really says a lot about, uh, you know, coach, and the staff, um, but the the, the kids uh, understanding that you know regardless of their time, they're an important integral part of that basketball team uh, because the resilience of those guys coming off the bench and playing their roles and doing their part really really shed a lot of light on Carolina as a basketball team, and really really was impactful in today's win against Kentucky. It was as hardcore as rock and roll is in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where this game was played, where the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is. I'm originally from Cleveland, so I got a love for the city. I thought that Carolina played with some Cleveland toughness in this game. They played inside. It was ground and pound. It was not always pretty. But on a day 
where Leaky Black and R.J. Davis did not shoot the basketball well, they're going to. At other times, Carolina said, you know what? We are going to out-tough you. We're going to out-muscle you. We are going to outlast you down the stretch in the game. We've got more bodies than you, and we will draw fouls while doing it. And when they needed enough plays, they got those plays in this game because I thought the create the creativity of Caleb Love and that alley-oop to Garrison Brooks was huge in the momentum in the swing of this game down the stretch, and that's why the Tar Heels are 5-2, and two, and that's why they're a winner over Kentucky. Experience, physicality, enough plays down the stretch. The, the types of plays that Shaman Williams once made. <laughs> well, I would say this. Uh, you know, that, that, that alley-oop made um, uh, by Caleb to, uh, to Garrison. Yeah. yeah, Garrison. Uh, if you look at the play, um, if I'm not mistaken, Playtech did a great job of putting himself in a position to set that back screen, and uh, and Caleb did a great job of delivering the pass. And uh, you know, it, it was it was outstanding win for us. Uh, but more importantly, uh, as one of our great Tar Heels from that also from that great city of Cleveland, Jawad Williams, I know that he was uh, appreciating. Mm-hmm. Uh, the love and the win that uh, the Tar Heels got in his hometown today as well. So we're, we're very thankful. We're very thankful as a program uh, uh, for the city, um, but we're very thankful for the opportunity to had uh, to play Kentucky today. But uh, you know, we're looking forward to to bigger things. Looking forward to bigger things and and having you know and having this game Tuesday against the Wolfpack. Mm, it'll be interesting. ACC opener, Roy Williams versus Kevin Keats. Fascinating showdown between NC State and UNC. He's Shaman Williams. I'm John Fanta. Thanks for tuning in. Follow us at the Field of 68. We have a slew of podcasting going on. We had live reaction uh, earlier from Jeff Goodman and Dan Dickow after Gonzaga made a statement in the top three matchup, a win over Iowa. Zags looks very good today. But follow at the Field of 68. Tons of great podcasting happening. Rob Dalster all over at Jeff Goodman and company. And we are happy to bring you some post-game reaction. The Tar Heels, a winner for Shaman Williams. I'm John Fanta. Have a good rest of your loaded sports Saturday.